Hey guys, JH, welcome to Practice Team. Okay, so hot here in Australia this time of the year, and I get burnt. And one of the nice people off my uh, my YouTube channel sent me these these arm protectors, and they're fantastic, guys. If you've never used them before, they're they're not only will they save you from the sun, uh, they will um, they're really cool when the when the breeze hits them. They're fantastic. I've never worn them before. But it's so brutal over here. Yeah, so Bob, if you know who you are, thanks for that, buddy. My friend Bob from the US. Okay, guys, today. Just something that's, that I think is, is a major uh, component in trying to swing a golf club consistently. And that is consistency of application of the golf swing. And what do I mean by that? Well, I coined the phrase, or, or, the, or, the, or the descriptive, when I came up with channel lock, I, I, I coined the, the process, the protocol. And every golf swing has a protocol, and should have a protocol. And the, the protocol, guys, is basically the way you assemble the golf swing to get it to work uh, to its maximum efficiency and effect. And when you have the good protocol or the perfect protocol in place, you're hitting great shots. They're great. That's because the protocol is being applied correctly. When you're not hitting it so good, there's nothing wrong with the protocol, it's just that the protocol is being applied incorrectly or out of sequence or a bit is missing. Now this is really elementary and very basic, but I bet the majority of you have never thought about it from this intrinsic fine line perspective. Now with a protocol, when you have one and you're hitting it great and you know how you're hitting it on that day and you've got the feeling, what you've got to do is give that protocol What, what, what I call a numerical designation and that is if there are five thoughts that you've got or five processes or mechanical applications in this golf swing when you're hitting a good whatever they are you have to number them from one, two, three, four, five and it might even be six but whatever they are from the outset to the end game they have to be numbered. Why? Because those numbers have to be in sequence and they all have to be applied. It's a bit like launching a nuclear weapon off a, uh, off a US submarine. If all the numbers are not in place, they can't launch the weapon. And I promise you guys, this is not as drastic uh, a result uh, in a golf swing as launching a nuclear weapon, but but what, what the analogy is here and the comparison is that if I apply those required numbers there, I can launch that missile every time, exactly the same. Just push a button, it'll go. Because the numbers are there. I've applied the numbers that let it go. Okay, it's not really like that, but, but that's some sort of an analogy. But what I think we should do to fire our missile, which is our golf swing, is work out what our protocol numbers are from from start to finish and if you're looking at channel lock for example now channel lock would be number one in the in in, in the protocol sequence would be the back ball position off the trail foot number two would be the alignment variable me number three would be the back cock of the shoulders. Number four would be the five o'clock nose. And and my number five these days would be would be thinking that I want the club to go back 
in a straight line without any wrist break. Now those four facets of the protocol make up the golf swing. That's it, that is the protocol. Now if you go through those facets and you have them sequentially numbered and you know what they are, all you have to do is go, it's just count down the numbers when you're over the golf ball. Just go through the numbered sequence. It's that simple guys. And if you go through your numbered sequence to five, you know that you've got all the parts of the protocol in place. Now I know that sounds simplistic and a lot of people will say you can't be that easy but I promise you that is the reason why the tour players spend so much time practicing because they want to get their swing protocols down so that they are absolute exactly the same every time and they operate in exactly the same sequence every time they may not have them numbered but if they clearly they're thinking individual so they're probably going through the process and whatever it is here thinking and the good players will not go into an ignition phase of their golf swing until they've gone through that protocol countdown and the sequencing of that countdown they won't do that so I think for everybody guys it doesn't matter whether you're a a channel lock um, exponent or a conventional golf swing exponent. And one of the guys uh, on the channel today um, came up with a great descriptive for people who who are going to be uh, channel lock applicators and, and followers and devotees. And uh, he termed the, the description lockers. Anyone that uses is a locker. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So I've, I've, I've stolen that, uh, that descriptive, but anybody who's applying channel lock is a locker. But whether you're a channel lock exponent or a conventional golf swing, if I was doing conventional golf swing, I, ne I never put into the sequence for me personally, my grip, because that is so automatic for me and that sequence is just it's going to happen anyway, no matter what golf swing I, I use or what swing mechanics I apply, what, what swing protocol I apply. My grip is always automatic, so it's, it doesn't come into the start of the, of the protocol sequencing. But if I was going to swing conventionally, um, the protocol for me would be in a conventional golf swing. For me, it would be, for me, basically, it's always the feet together here to position the club the centralizing of the of the arms in the middle of the body here that, that would be number one the number two would be the step away here in a conventional golf swing I just step away so that I've still got this relationship here of the club and the uh, um, and the grip in the middle of my body here um, the backswing so so there's number one and number two Num number three for me in a conventional golf swing is just the feeling the weight of the golf club, the heaviness of the golf club, the heaviness of the golf club, feeling the heaviness, heavy, heavy, heavy. So I've got that. Okay, so JH, you've got the heavy, and then and then and then from there, it's just a momentum loading into the backswing. So so feeling the heavy is is the number three. The actual swing is is swinging that heaviness or that mass to the top of the top of the swing, and guys. Once you've got to the top of the swing, if you've executed the process in the backswing correctly and you've got the right torque factors in your golf swing, the downswing is going to be automatic. Sure, you can think about some deliberate things in the downswing I do, particularly in channel lock. My, my downswing thought in channel lock is to really fire the club out to the ball and try and hit the golf ball as my primary focus of target. The golf ball is my target. Uh, so that might be number five in the channel lock for me if I was going to be a, a channel lock um, a protocol applicator. But whatever it is guys, when you're hitting a good you'll know because you've gone through something, you've thought about the golf swing and you're applying those thoughts and they're working beautifully. 
So just think about um, when, when it's good, what is the sequence? What are the parts of the protocol? And what are the sequential application of the parts of that protocol? And just guys, just categorize them as numbers. It's better to categorize them as a number than as a feel. Because you can relate back to the number. What does that number mean? What does number one, two, three, four, and five, and six mean? And when you go down, when you're in the countdown phase here over the golf ball, just count down the sequence. And, and if there's really there's no way that you can apply a false protocol or an incomplete protocol if you go through the through the sequencing countdown. How, how can you leave something out? If you go through it, you know, if there's five parts in your protocol, or six or whatever it is, if you count those numbers down sequentially, you can't leave anything out. And I think you should do that before your practice session and before you play, if you don't get a chance to play on the tee. But you've got to build that 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 knowing sequence, what that sequence is and what it relates to. Uh, and then you know that I've only got five points of application that I have to apply here. Now think about them, what are they? And they're easy to remember because they're associated with a number. Number one is this, number two is that, number three, four, five. It, guys, it's so simple, it almost defies being described as simple because it's, it's simpler than simple. And it's foolproof. Because if you think about it, if you have assigned to a, po a specific part of the protocol a number, then it's there. It's Im embedded. And you can't think about anything else. And if you know there are five parts in your golf swing, then why would you start the swing if those five parts are not in your thinking or are, are not in place or applied? Why would you start the backswing? Why would you start an incomplete protocol. Again, that sounds simplistic, but if you think about it, you know, the beauty of this is, and the simplicity is, the simplicity of application. You just play by the numbers. You set up and swing by the numbers. It's a numbers game. Now I know what um, I know what my, my my protocol is. So, and I haven't hit any shots today. So I'll come in here, I'll get my, my protocol numbers, I know what they are. The first one is there, is the back ball position, the second one is my alignment. The third one is back cock, five o'clock nose and I'm just going to fire it back here. Now guys, first shot of the day, <laughs> and it's perfect. Now you know, it, and, I, and I've always had a catch line or a catch phrase or a catch story, if you will. And, I, and I've always used it. And, and I've driven some people nuts and then you know, they, they want to hit me with a golf club sometimes or, or whatever. They'll run over me with their buggy. Because they'll come along and they'll say, JH, you know, no, they're hitting the ball perfectly yesterday or two days ago and they've had a lesson. And they come back and they say, oh, JH, that, 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 that swing doesn't work. I can't hit that. I went out yesterday and I played terrible. And I said, well, show me what you're doing. And he said, see, I can't hit that. That's terrible. I said, well, <laughs> of course you can't hit it because you're not doing what you were doing the other day. That is nothing like the swing you had the other day. And the other day, the shots were coming off perfect because you were applying a perfect swing application of mechanics or a protocol. And the only difference is when you're swinging badly, you're not applying the proper protocol and the correct protocol that you're applying when you're hitting it well. The bad swing is not the good swing. Again, simplistic. And invariably I used to turn everybody around instantaneously because I just get them back on track. Say, well guys, it's, it's got nothing to do with the swing. You can do it. It's just that you're not doing it. You're not doing what you were doing the other day. And when you go out and, and the swing's not working, you got to say, well, it's not working because I'm not applying what I should be applying to get it to work as the good swing that I had the other day. Again guys, so simple, it, it almost defies, you know, any real necessary dialogue, because it is that simple. Now I came out here today, 
haven't hit a shot, but I know I'm not going to hit it bad because I know what my protocol is. And I will not hit the ball until I've gone through the protocol. Now, I wasn't always like that, and I've been like everybody else. I've had my periods where I've hit it fantastic for a week and then gone out and played in a money match and played like a duck. And, and nothing had changed from an anatomical, physiological, um, athletic perspective, nothing had changed. But the golf swing had changed because it wasn't as it was when I was hitting it good. And that was the only difference. The bad practice session or the bad shot uh, was only because they weren't good swings. Again, sounds simple, doesn't it? But they weren't good swings. They weren't they weren't the swings that I was applying when I was hitting the ball well. And why, why did I apply bad swings as opposed to good swings? Because I really didn't have the good swing understood correctly and locked down in totally, and I mean absolutely locked down as an understanding, as a sequential application of things to do in the golf swing. Okay, guys, now that's, that's just something that I think will help you. No matter what type of golf swing you apply, if it's, a, if it's a conventional golf swing, whatever it is. I have a special thought process for conventional golf swing. And I won't hit it until I'm ready. I know what that is. Now, I haven't hit that conventional swing for a long time. But that shot went just dead straight. But what's interesting in hitting those conventional shots is how ungainly they feel and how much I feel this, this past the centre of the body. I mean, they still went straight, but they feel ungainly. Not like channel lock. And I feel like I don't really have any control over my shoulder girdle in a, in a conventional goal swing. Now that ball went beautifully, but the swing doesn't feel anywhere near as good as channel lock. But all those shots, even though I haven't been around a conventional golf swing for a while, they all go straight because I'm applying the original protocol that I had with my old golf swing. And I, and I won't hit it until I've got that protocol in place. And that's just perfect. I mean, all those shots are all the same. Because the protocol's the same. Okay, guys, it's a long video today on on talking, but I think I think the, the the talk content here is really important, and it can make a lot of difference to your game. So don't give up on anything that you've done before that was good, because if you if you've swung well once, you can swing well every time. I mean, that's the relation that that's the reality of it. If you can do it today, you can do it tomorrow. But you have to apply the good stuff that you're applying today, tomorrow. Anything other than the good stuff here today, and you have to know what that is, anything, anything other than that applied tomorrow will not produce this result. Anything other than what you're doing today. So that's a simplistic message, guys. Just have a look at that and uh, take it on board and go out and try and build your own protocol, whatever it is. But play by the numbers, set up by the numbers, and don't ever go away from the numbers. Think about it. If you've got a sequence of numbers and you apply them, and they're the right numbers, uh, that you've deduced are the right numbers after practicing and hitting the ball well, if you apply those the next day or the day after or the day after, there's no reason why you can't hit the ball perfectly every time you go out, or well. We're not going to hit it perfect every day because we don't have perfect timing every day, we don't have perfect balance every day, because that's physiology. We're changing our balance factors, everything, every millisecond. So, so that's going to vary a little bit, the timing factor, but the basic uh, tenet of the shot and the accuracy of the shot on the ball flight uh, shouldn't change very much. It might change a little bit in timing, but the overall structure of it shouldn't change, and the good shot factor shouldn't uh, diminish and just leave you. Okay, guys, that's just something I've always had uh, a bit of a bee in my bonnet about in, in terms of, you know, why swings just evaporate. They only evaporate, guys, because we let them evaporate, and we're not as committed 
to understanding them as well as we should in terms of a protocol when we're hitting it well. So it all starts when you're hitting it well and understanding why you're hitting it well. No point in hitting it well if you don't know what you're doing. You can have all the feels in the world, but those feels don't last and feels are very hard to reproduce. But if you've got some solid data, like a numbered sequence that relate to, to something specific, then that's pretty easy to apply. That's a known formula. It's almost like a written down formula, okay? We just apply that formula and I get this result. Okay guys, have a look at that. I think it's got some, uh, some merit. Anyway, nice day to stand out here and, uh, and just uh, gibber on. But everybody that I've ever given that sermon to, and I've done it many times, uh, and particularly guys that have come back uh, and said, look, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, well, it did work. How did it work if it doesn't work? How did we hit perfect shots? How did we have a perfect session? When we played, we hit good shots. How did that happen if it doesn't work? It doesn't work today or yesterday when you were doing, because you weren't doing what you were doing when it did work. Don't want to labour the point. Okay, guys, have a look at that. That's just uh, processing your protocol according to JH. I just think it's really simplistic and everybody should be able to do it. Tell me what you think.